Nia Malika Henderson and welcome to On Background with Colorado and Washington leading the way. Pot activists are mapping out new battleground cities and states they think might legalize marijuana use. Today voters in Portland, Maine will decide if their city becomes the latest to do just that. Will others actually follow suit? Here to take us through the politics of pot is Dan Ripple. He's the director of federal policies at the Marijuana Policy Project. Also joining us, we have Post reporter Reed Wilson. He's been following the way states have been tackling this issue. Guys, thank you so much uh, for being here with me. Dan, I want to start right with you. Tell me what the difference is between decriminalizing uh, marijuana use and legalizing it. So decriminalizing marijuana just means that we're no longer going to arrest and prosecute people for possession of a small amount of marijuana, whereas legalizing marijuana, or uh, as we often refer to it, taxing and regulating marijuana, means actually taking the, the marijuana trade and, and industry away from you know, drug cartels and criminals who are in charge of selling marijuana now and putting it in the hands of tax-paying, law-abiding businesses and actually regulating where mar marijuana is grown and sold. And Reed, what's your sense of where the federal government is on this? I know Barney Frank had introduced some legislation. He, of course, not, is not in Congress anymore. I think that was in 2011. It went nowhere. What's yeah. your sense? Well, the, the federal government sees this very differently than, the, than a lot of the states that you mentioned earlier. The states are moving much more aggressively towards decriminalization or legalization in some, or in some so, cases, right. whereas the federal government, has, the Justice Department, has continued to feud with those localities, specifically in California and Oregon, uh, are the two uh, the, the two states where they've been most aggressive uh, prosecuting folks who are not doing anything wrong under state law. And so as, as part of your organization, Dan, you are essentially targeting uh, 10 or so states uh, for, for legalizing recreational marijuana, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, Hawaii. What's your sense of why those states could be ripe for legalization? Well, the states that you mentioned are most likely to do this legislatively. They don't have a ballot initiative process there like we do in, in Colorado and Washington where ballot initiatives were recently passed and like we do in Maine, uh, California, Arizona, Nevada, and some other states where we expect in 2016 or maybe even sooner initiatives will pass to, to tax and regulate marijuana. And Reed, is it a sense that this could end up being uh, another sort of coastal middle America divide or red state, blue state divide? Well, aside from a few states like Nevada and Arizona that you just mentioned, every other state in that in that list has one thing in common. They have democratic legislatures. And in those states, you know, one of the big stories that we're telling at, at GovBeat is the divide between red America and blue America. Yeah. Red America is restricting abortion and, uh, and, and cutting taxes on everything, whereas Blue America is legalizing gay marriage and legalizing marijuana. So here we, we see, again, that sort of patchwork nation, as you mentioned, it's the coastal versus the inland. And Dan, what's your sense of the nature of the opposition? It seems like uh, their essential argument is that, you know, it, it kills your brain cells, son, uh, to, to uh, quote, lean on me. Yeah, yeah, it's really just a, a modern form of reefer madness that we've heard back in the old days. But uh, the fact of the matter is, at this point, Americans aren't buying it. They understand that marijuana is dramatically safer than alcohol. It's not toxic. It doesn't cause overdose fatalities. It carries relatively minor long-term health risks. More importantly, it's not associated with violence and reckless behavior like alcohol. And so for that reason, and also some of the reasons that we talked about earlier, namely taking this industry away from criminals and drug cartels and putting it in the hands of licensed tax-paying businesses, Americans are ready to tax and regulate marijuana. Reed, what's your sense of the opposition? Well, the, the opposition is, uh, it, not only does it come from uh, those who don't think marijuana is good for right. uh, good for you or anything like that, it also, surprisingly enough, has come a lot from owners of marijuana dispensaries. In a lot of these states where legalization and decriminalization are happening, uh, in a lot of states where uh, there are medical marijuana facilities, okay. decriminalizing, legalizing marijuana means those dispensaries suddenly have competition. They had a monopoly, uh, now they've got competition in the marketplace, their profits come down. You know, uh, we've seen that in, in Colorado and in Washington. I think we'll see it elsewhere. One big thing that the states that are doing this are taking advantage of that, that uh, Dan was talking about is, is taxation. Uh, this right. is a new, uh, a new way to earn revenue, and a lot of these states are hard up for revenue And right to now. build elementary schools, apparently, in Colorado. In Colorado yeah. If you look at the projected uh, tax revenues in Washington State and in Colorado and also nationally, Colorado, $67 million, Washington, $560 million, a uh, hypothetical look uh, more nationally, $5.8 billion. What do you make of that, Dan? Well, you know, I think the, the taxation revenue is the icing on the cake. I mean, for most Americans, the reason that they want to tax and regulate marijuana, again, is to no longer arrest and prosecute adults for using something that's safer than alcohol. 
my background is as a prosecuting attorney, and I just felt like it was a waste of my time and my taxpayer dollars arresting people for something that's really just not a threat to public safety. Uh, so if we can, you know, take revenue away from drug cartels and, and reallocate law enforcement resources and do all of those things, that makes sense. And if we can maybe collect some tax revenue on top of that, then that's, that's icing on the cake. Reed, what's your sense of how we got here? If you look at the polls now, Gallup had a poll uh, this month. It says, the poll was, should it be made legal, marijuana? Yes, 58%, no, 39%. Is this Snoop Dogg's fault? No, I think this tracks uh, precisely with the gay marriage, uh, the support for gay marriage. Uh, uh, what we're seeing over and over is uh, the, the polls, the difference between the polls that are taken now and the polls that were taken 20 years ago in the early and mid-90s right. uh, when people opposed gay marriage and opposed legalization is that there's a whole new generation that are being included in those polls. And there are people who are, you know, who, who were under age then and couldn't vote and couldn't uh, wouldn't be included in a polling sample their attitudes are different from their grandparents attitudes from their parents attitudes right. uh, even from their older brothers and sisters attitudes so we've seen this cultural shift as this new generation has become a bigger and bigger part of the electorate what's your sense Dan I mean is this possibly a tipping point or again are we going to see uh, the sort of gridlock state to state to state no I think we'll see a number of states you know in the next 10 to 12 years, we'll, we'll probably see, just like with medical marijuana, 14 or so states that, that pass legislation taxing, regulating marijuana, that'll put the impetus on the federal government to change their laws. And, and you know, the poll that Reed mentioned, when you look at the actual numbers, you see that young voters are, as he mentioned, driving this trend. So we expect that number 58% to, to continue to increase to 60, 65, and, and sooner or later 70% of Americans who support taxing and regulating marijuana. Do you think this will ever uh, matter, Reed, or bubble up to like the national level where you have like presidential ca candidates talking about it, legalize it, don't legalize it? I don't think uh, if you're a presidential strategist, <laughs> you're really going to want to be advocating uh, anything like that. It seems like really dangerous yeah, territory like to get into. Hail, it's, yeah, uh, but kind of then again, but uh, as we talk about this cultural shift, remember Bill Clinton was embarrassed by the fact that he didn't inhale. Right. Uh, now we've had you know two presidents in a row who have admitted to drug use. I yeah. mean, this is like this it, is it, it is not. It does not carry the stigma uh, that that it once did, especially marijuana. I mean, yeah. that's, that's barely even a question now when when somebody runs for national office. Yeah, yeah. And so these are the so we'll look at Maine, uh, we'll look at Colorado in terms of the taxation issues. Uh, these ten other states that you're looking at, any other states where you feel like this is bubbling up? Yeah, I mean, I expect initiatives in Colorado, or sorry, California, Oregon, Arizona, Nevada, and Maine, and then the state legislatures that are looking at this in the next few years, Rhode Island. New Hampshire, Vermont, Hawaii. Uh, so there, yeah. there's quite a few states that are that are looking at this very soon. Dan Riffle of the Marijuana Policy Project, and of course our very own Reed Wilson Post. We thank you both for being here with us today.